the steam when the when the sun's hitting the moss. Beautiful. <laughs> Good old nature. This is a good place. This is a good place to camp. It's flat, it runs a little bit that way, but it runs down a bit, but I'll just put my legs at the bottom and should be our reed. Right, I'll do a quick one. The weather's taking a turn. It's been smashing it down. It's still raining now, it's so good that I found a campsite and got my tent up when I did. Let's have a tour. The tent, the Lan Shan 2 Pro, I believe it's Pro. The Lan Shan 2 Pro. All pegged out, I've got a ground sheet for it as well. It's shedding water pretty well, we just, it's just came down quite hard and that shed water very well. I've put it quite low to the ground, but at the front, you've still got plenty of Plenty of room for the air to get in. It looks like all this stuff is just where I've seam sealed it and it's got everywhere. Went a bit haywire with it. Went a bit OTT with seam seal. Uh, one of the things I've done is I swapped out the plastic attachments there for these metal ones and it has this added little plastic thing on it here that can it's like tightening up and down the line just stronger in heavy winds um i haven't swapped out the pegs yet i am gonna do and i've got four delta pegs to go around the outside as well it's a dual entrance tent i've done the same on this side as well porch as per usual my hestra gloves without the lining in my axe so Billy can. I've not gone for the Rab Ascent, I've gone for a, my free season bag because we're in woodland and we're not high up so I'm not expecting it to get that cold so I've gone with the Alp Kit Pipe Dream 400. New Trekology pillow, I loved that last time and my airbed that seems to be holding up. I did a, a running repair on it, you can't even see where it is, it's under there. See that? A bit of a running repair I did like last time. I've got my my lantern up there, lantern deck. You can, uh, the bag is what bag are we on? Osprey Ether, seventy liters, the big boy. A few spare clothes there. Job's a donut. It's full of pine here and that's not the best for having fires, especially when you've got a tent in the vicinity. So, I'm going to have a little hike up here, see if we can find some decent wood, bring it down, prep it and just find somewhere, make a little fireplace. I don't want to be too far from the tent and I've got this nice rock <coughs> to use as a little backrest. Look at it, it's even got some... Uh, Bit of wood sorrel, it's got wood sorrel growing out of it. A lovely wild edible, tastes like apple peel. Right, <laughs> good tent look. Don't she look well? Don't she look well in woodlands? Right, let's go and get some wood. Looks like it's going to be a nice evening. How dry is this stuff? Bit punky, but it'll do. Get some sizable bits that I can carry back to camp. Can I 
carry you and these bits of wood? That's the question. <laughs> right, shouldn't be a problem. Shouldn't be a problem. There we go. There we go. See if I had my... If I had bush box, it'd be going there. I wouldn't be too worried about it, but... I'm going to be doing some slow cooking in the billy can, so we, uh, we'll have a fire for a while. In fact, I might get it going now. Still got a few hours of daylight, but get it going now so it can burn down to some coals. I'm not, I'm having an early night tonight anyway. What I like to do is sit <laughs> where I'm going to be sitting. Do you know what I mean? Of course you do. Ah, a few little tests, there we go. There's the backrest. Fire there. Not too big. Fire there. Mark it. There we go. Making sure we're not too close to any trees. It's wet. Because it's rained. But, and especially in pine forests, especially where there's pine trees, you have to be careful of the ground because you can just end up getting leaf litter like this that just mulches down and just, you know, there's no soil underneath it. It's just, it's just sort of leaf litter and detritus that is flammable and you can start out your can set the whole floor on fire. So have a little dig down, see what you're dealing with, see what's underneath. Now, I can see here that we've got clay. It's grey, so. It's clay and soil. See that? So it's okay. A couple of roots, little roots, fibrous roots that can come out. Yeah, look. That's clear. So that's good. So, we know we're not going to set the ground on fire. I'm only having a small fire anyway. But another reason why to dig down is just so that we don't leave a scorch mark t uh, for tomorrow. I'll plonk that all there. Because it'll scorch this bit and then all the fresh soil will go over the top and you won't be able to see it. I'm going to make a simple pot hanger. Is that a bit wobbly there? Or what? Yes. First I'm going to make sure that my... That'll do. That should do it. Right. Yeah, we're gonna make us a, a simple pot hanger.
big. It's only a small fire so I'm just gonna cut it into small bits. It's a bit punky. And the silky saws they cut on the back stroke so you don't need to go hammer and tongs with it because you'll just knock yourself out. It would be wrong for me to stand straight and just go like that, because if I miss, I'm going straight into the pin, aren't I? Or even worse, medic. Medic. So you want to, when you come down, bring your whole body down with it, so that if you miss, if I, miss, if I go like that and I miss, I'm just going into the floor. Nice and simple. Longer ones. Give it some welly. <clears throat> Look at that, I've nearly worn it through. The old fire steel, how oh, thin she is. <laughs> seen, some, <laughs> seen some action as that. Let's use pine wood to get it going. Puko style. I've been testing it quite a bit and I love it. You can really, you can do a lot of finer work with it if you're into your carving and stuff. It's uh, Really nice.
that's all you need. That is all you need. And then just some finer stuff using the 90 degree of the back of the knife. I'll use my backup fire lighter because the other one's looking a bit a bit worse for wear. First time, every time. No. Two? Two. <laughs> Take two. This is just going to be real simple because um, normally I'd just go to, I'd put together some stuff from the butchers or whatever, but um, I was caught for time, so this is cheap and cheerful. Cheap and cheerful. Mediterranean veg, already marinated, courgettes, peppers, onions, tomato. Mediterranean well, veg bait. Get that in. Soz that it's not from butchers, but that's just life in it. It's actually from uh, Lidl, mate. <laughs> Lidl. Two minted lamb steaks. They smell delightful. I'm not even going to chop them up. I'm just going to bang them in. So that's two minted lamb steaks with all the veg. We've got some. I picked up some wild garlic on the way in. Bit of flavour in that. Spring is in the air. A bottle of all peculiar. Better not cut myself on this new knife. So shall I tell you something? I'm going to go all in with it because I don't want to drink any. Oh. All in. And then we've got Sir Tubius of Thomas. Can you? There he is. Marketer. That smells lovely. That smells lovely. Cumin, cinnamon, black pepper, cayenne, salt, maize, starch, garlic powder, red bell pepper, onion powder, smoked paprika, apricot juice powder, pomegranate powder, herbs, coriander leaf, mint, green bell pepper, lemon oil. Wow. Wow indeed. In fact, don't touch it with my fingers because I've made that mistake before, young tubs, with the death dust, and it came, I came a cropper. Top it up. Some H2O. Good. So, you just where you. I'm putting a lot of faith in that end stick here. In fact, I'm going to strengthen it. It's best to be safe than sorry in it. Look at us go. We're bushcrafting. Look at us. Axe. Bushcraft. I just went to chuck the drone up to see if I could catch some of the sun going down and um I had a nightmare. I got to the top of the trees and it just started 
it wouldn't stop going left. I did and I, I didn't touch it and it just sort of went into trees. Loads of noise and commotion and then just dit, 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 thud. And then I got it back up and the gimbal was just bust. Like the gimbal's bro the gimbal's bust on her. She was like twitching out like that. <laughs> and I uh, gutted but R.I.P. R.I.P. Sylvester Stadron. Dinner's nearly ready. Let's see. Oh. That's good gear. Getting chunks of meat. Uh, I think I'll put it on with the lid off and we'll just do a quick, a quick reduce just to thicken that up a little bit. That's nearly done. the coals underneath. And there it is. Got a decent rolling boil on there. And that'll just steam away. I want that to reduce uh, maybe by a third. Oh, it's just cutting with a spoon, mate. Reese, Reese with a spoon. Good. <laughs> there you go, look. Lamb. Oh my goodness gracious me. Wow. Wowzers. Oh man, honey, I'm ready for it as well. I always go off like it's the best food I've ever eaten, but mate, that is just divine. It's getting it all set up so that I can show you it without blinding myself. Look at that, it's pretty as a picture, look. That's so tender. Ridiculous. Um onion. Onion. Why am I showing you it? It's an onion, isn't it? Ah. Dude. I mean it's flavoursome anyway because the meat was marinated marinated in mint. The vegetables were marinated in like a Mediterranean herbs. Well, 
We've got Tubby Toms in there. Which is bringing all sorts to the game. And then all that just cooked in a reduced bottle of Old Peculiar. <laughs> cooked up at fire. For about three hours. You can't beat it. That's me, I'm fed and watered. I've had a lovely night just chilling by the fire. No booze are out. Just owl sounds, owls, the crackling of the fire. <laughs> yeah, lovely stuff. Sort of a couple of hand warmers. One in my pocket, one in the bottom of the sleeping bag. Oh man, it's good. Good to be back out in woods. See you on the morrow. Good morning. Cold mate, I was cold. It's too soon. I've got used to it, um I've got used to Rab sleeping bag and the three season bag wasn't it wasn't enough. Um, my hand warmers luckily kept me going, but I kept waking up being cold and being like, oh no. And I haven't been cold camping for a, a long time. So, that's food for thought for my next trip. Condensation, it's kind of damp above my head, obviously, where I've been breathing. At the foot end, and down at the bottom, it's bone dry. So happy with it. I do have a cloth that I just give it a a once over with the cloth before I pack it away. But that's not too bad, considering it wasn't windy at all, and I'm in a woodland, so there's not much air getting blown through it. The bathtub's fine. Nothing came through there. All good. Some right noises last night, a couple of badgers having sex or something, I don't know. Oh, it is a chilly one, man. My fingers are chiltons. Right, let's get up. Any warmth? No. Dead. Dead as disco. Get a little fire going. To warm me, uh, warm me hands up. It's only six o'clock. The sun's just poking its head up over there, over at, uh, over that cliff. Oh, it's nippy. <laughs> I've kind of spoilt myself with new rab sleeping bag, so now I'd normally bring a down jacket, maybe my army, maybe my army softies. I didn't bring any of that. I just thought I'd be all right in free season bag. <laughs> 
I've out, been out at the game too long, mate. I was cold. <laughs> Actually cold. That feeling, I've not felt that in a long time of of being just cold and not having enough stuff. Like Normally you get cold and you think, oh, I'll put, I'll chuck a coat on or, or whatever. I just had my hand warmers and I was going there. <laughs> just moving them all over myself. <laughs> quality gear, mate. Quality, quality gear. Right, let's get this fire blazed up quick. Let's see if that goes up. Okay, we're going. It's go time. Oh. Uh, life systems ferro rod shite <coughs> I thought I'd use it because I've not really used it and um, it's got a magnesium strip at one side ferro rod at the other it doesn't show a good sparks that is not it's just shit and it's broke snap so life systems ferro rod Keep it. Get some moss. Get some moss. I'm not doing breakfast at the moment because I'm fasting but what I will do is have a brew a nice warm brew and then I'm gonna get off oh, because it's midweek so we can't stick around however much I'd like to we just can't stick around because there's work to do so let's get a brew on While my water's boiling, let's put tent away and then we're gonna have a brew. Right, let's go fill this with hot liquid.
there we are. There's not been a great deal of waffling on this one, which a few of you will be grateful for. It's, uh, I just wanted to come out, man. I just wanted to, it's been so long since I've camped in the woods. I didn't want to be all giddy and pissed and that. I just wanted to genuinely appreciate it for what it was. And I've done that and I feel great for it. And I've woken up on a beautiful, just calm, the sun's out. It's perfect. I'm going to leave you with a Leave No Trace poem. For those of you that, that didn't see it, I, I did a little poem about leaving no trace because I'm, it's, I'm seeing it so much more. Now that we're not in England anyway, we're not allowed to leave the country, so everyone's holidaying in England and everyone's been locked up so long that uh, there's just... All the beauty spots are, are becoming a bit of a tip there's been wildfires, um, it's, it's been well publicised anyway and it's, it's giving us wild campers a bad name. Um, and it's not cool and, it, and it, I think it's just education, I don't think it's people per se, I just think it's education. People just need to learn a bit more and maybe respect nature a little bit more and, and I think it'll be okay. Anyway, but I'll leave you with that poem in case you haven't heard it. If you have heard it, you can skip it. Right, much love as always. Take care, I'll see you soon. Cue the poem. I love the summer in the great outdoors. The coast, the woods, the mountains, the moors. I love swimming in lakes, in rivers, in the sea. I love hiking with me mates and a flask of Yorkshire tea A pint of landlord in the beer garden, a can of faith in the park Regretting to bring a jumper for when it gets dark I love the smell in the air of the first barbecue That inspirational whiff makes us want one too I guess you don't really know what you've got till it's gone And we've all been so socially distant for so long That we're coming out of the traps like a whippet on the track And we're taking our rubbish but we're not bringing it back. So don't be a muppet and leave all your rubbish. Be more like a womble and t You what? Oh, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a mythical, it's like a dog. It's like a bear. It's like a, it's like a cross between a, it's like an anteater and a bear. But it wears a hat. It's like an ant. Hey Siri, what's a womble? The wombles are fictional pointy-nosed, furry creatures created by Elizabeth Beresford and originally appearing in a series of children's novels from 1968. Anyway, I digress. What I'm basically saying is don't leave a mess. I love the summer and the great outdoors. The coast, the woods, the mountains, the moors. And we're all in this together as we're spinning through space. So let's make it better for one another and leave no trace.